Our guy Ken Rosenthal joining us. And you know, it's so weird. Usually I'm talking to you through a TV and you're right here. I know, it's I, great. I love it. I can see you in the flesh. So let's start out with some juicy uh, reporting that you did this morning, finding out the no trade list for Madison Bumgarner. And so the chess match begins, I guess, huh? Right. Now, let me explain this, Kevin, because it is kind of confusing. The teams he chose are all contenders. <laughs> there are eight teams. They're all really good teams. And people might say, well, why would he do that? It's pretty simple. Leverage. When you have a no-trade list, what you want is if your team agrees to a trade, say the Giants and Cardinals agree. Well, Madison Bumgarner has to approve. What does it take for him to approve? Sometimes it takes some form of compensation. So for Bumgarner, a very shrewd and strategic list that he has there. And keep in mind, getting traded for him as a potential free agent is an advantage because what would happen? He no longer would be eligible for a qualifying offer, no longer would be tied to draft pick compensation, and would be an unrestricted free agent. And we've seen with Keichel and Kimbrell, that draft pick can be a drag. Yeah, it is. Speaking of Keichel and Kimbrell, I mean, I, I still can't believe here we are. We're, you know, we're, we're mid-May and those guys still aren't signed. When are they going to get signed? The consensus in baseball right now is that it will be after the draft. Because after the draft, which is in early June, then there is no more draft pick compensation, no more issues along those lines. You just pay the money. However, there is incentive, and you look at these teams right here. There are reasons the teams at the bottom of the list should be really seriously thinking about doing it right now. The Phillies, you're going to be worried about the 91st pick when your team's stupid money? I don't think so. The Brewers, the 133rd pick because they've already signed Yasmani Grandal and lost the pick. They, in theory, should be incentivized to do this. Now, you see the figures on the right. Those are draft pool considerations, not international pool. What it is, it enables you in your draft pool to have as much money as possible, and then you divide it up between your picks. So when you lose that money, it lo limits your flexibility. That's a problem. But at the same time, if you're trying to win, maybe it shouldn't be a problem. And let's say you're the Phillies. You get Kimbrell. You keep him away from the Braves. You get him for an extra month instead of waiting until after the draft and waiting for him to build up. And yet, I don't know that we're going to see anyone act. For a random 133, how do you know what that pick's going to be? You're getting an all-star close. I don't know. I, I, I'm with you. I, I would go out and make the move. Uh, so uh, teams making moves or not in this case, how about managers making moves? Who's on the hot seat in this early part of the season, do you think? We've talked about this, Kevin. Two guys. In both in the NL East. Mm. It's Mickey Calloway and it's Dave Martinez. Now, Calloway, according to Joel Sherman of the New York Post, confirmed by many others, met yesterday with the GM, Brody Van Wagenen, and one of the ownership representatives, Jeff Wilpon. They didn't threaten his job, but the fact that they had a meeting and said, let's go, we don't want another collapse early in the season, again, that is not a great sign. Now, the Mets, good win last night against the Marlins. They've got an easier schedule coming up. That should help. The more dire situation, perhaps, is Dave Martinez with the Nationals. They are in Los Angeles right now. They've got two more games in L.A. Then they go home with an off day Monday. If things don't turn around, that might be the kind of day where you would make a change. They've already fired their pitching coach. They don't want to fire their manager. No team wants to. It's an admission of failure. But at the same time, they may determine at some point we need to change the energy, we need to get going. They have some internal candidates. I don't expect it would be Girardi or Showalter because of the money involved. They'd be paying two managers. They don't like to pay one, so it would be a problem for them. Yikes. Uh, we already talked about the Indians and how they didn't do anything in the offseason to really up their team, to, to improve their team. Injuries now. So how do they handle the trade deadline? Well, it's going to be interesting, Kevin, because if they are really out of it, and it's going to take a lot for them to be out of it, you have Trevor Bauer. You've talked about him before. But this team is quite top-heavy, and that's the problem right here. Their best players are the guys you can see right here. These guys contributed to their overall team, last year's numbers. You see the percentage of overall war that they did. Now, war is not an all-encompassing number, but this shows you just how much they rely on all of these guys. And really, only Carrasco and Bauer have been productive this year, so that's where they are right now. And if they do fall out of it, I would expect them to be creative. What if they don't fall out of it? What if they're, they're in it, but it's they're a great not... question. I mean, they have not done much, right? right? You would think they would have some flexibility, but they have not acted as if they have any flexibility. So I'm not sure they're going to be that aggressive. No, great stuff as always. Ken Rosenthal, see you in just a moment.